Hey, welcome back to Mr. Market. We're now into episode 16. We had a short trading week last week because of the holiday weekend with Easter. I hope you had a great Easter. Uh, last week, the market was down a fraction, about 0.05%. We had the jobs numbers come out on Friday when there was no trading, and that came in around expectations. Jobs created were about 236,000. The expectation was somewhere close to about 230,000. And as you can see, there is a, a deceleration in the, in the jobs growth numbers, but still, anything over 200,000 is still pretty strong in terms of the economic growth. So uh, as we also saw, the, the unemployment rate went down from 3.6% to 3.5%. And that is probably enough to give the Federal Reserve enough ammunition to say, hey, you know, the economy is still pretty strong. We need to keep raising interest rates just a little bit further. And the market seems to agree with that sentiment. Before the jobs numbers came out, there was about a 50% chance of a rate hike in May. And after the jobs numbers came out, that percentage went up to about 66%. And for this week, we have some more economic indicators. We have the CPI on Wednesday and the PPI on Thursday. And then on Friday, we have the beginning of earnings season where we're going to have a number of the big banks start posting their earnings results. So we're going to have uh, some potential volatility this week. So for our portfolio, we had a pretty decent week last week. We were up $1,432 and that put us up to $24,600 for the year to date which put us to about 49% of our annual goal of $50,000 a year. Remember, our goal is to make 20% a year off a $250,000 portfolio. And if everything goes well with this following week, we will get to our 50% mark. Okay, let's talk about the stock market. Okay, now we know earnings are coming up, but there's been something that's been bothering me. You know, we all know that there is going to be a potential recession around the corner. I know we've been talking about it for the past half year. Um, when we when we look at the the yield curve inversion, you know, a yield curve inversion is when you have higher short term rates than intermediate to longer term rates. Whenever we've had a yield curve inversion, we have historically had a recession follow within about a year to year and a half. And so we're getting to that point, and especially when you have a yield curve inversion of this magnitude, we have never avoided a recession. So when you have that, we also have some other data from Bank of America that shows the future um, global earnings will fall to about 16% about, uh, by sometime around August. And we're also getting a downturn in the economic surprise numbers. And historically, when we get into a recession, earnings typically fall on average somewhere around 18%. And so if you take a look at where we are right now, we're only about a third of the way there. So, you know, there's, there's still a further drop expected. And the market really isn't acting like it's going to be that big of a deal. And this rally that we've had over this past quarter has been really strong. And, you know, there's, there's a case that can be made that it's a little bit of an illusion. If you take a look at what's really been driving this, it's actually been the top 20 stocks in the S&P 500 that have driven the majority of the returns. And if you take a look at all the other 480 stocks and it, it really hasn't contributed much to this rally at all. And so, you know, this is a really shallow rally. It's, it's really being driven by just a few names. And so it's, it's something that I'm really a little bit cautious about, especially since you know, what's been driving this has been technology. Technology got really beat up going into the end of the year with tax loss selling, and then we had a massive rebound this year. But if you also take a look at where the earnings are for technology, they have actually been falling. And so you have another divergence here where the price is going up and the earnings are going down. And if you take a look at the estimated earnings for the S&P 500, those are going up, but at the same time, the estimated GDP numbers are expected to go fall. And so you have another divergence here, and that is a problem to me. And I, I, I've seen the market stay in, in this kind of trajectory for, for a long time, and it, who knows how long it can stay. But I'm not a fan of it, and I think every single time that the Federal Reserve keeps raising interest rates, you know, that that resetting period can get closer and closer. So it looks like something is starting to go break 
and you can kind of you can kind of see it with how the bond market is starting to behave. You can see the the long-term bonds. It's starting to break above its 200-day moving average. You can also take a look at bond yields and you can see it's starting to go fall below support levels. So, you know, the market is starting to kind of sniff out some kind of danger, starting to look like either a recession is starting to get closer and become um, a more immediate reality, or it's telling us that, you know, there's the beginning stages of a flight to safety or both. And at the same time, if you take a look at the volatility index, it's still below 20. And whenever I've seen that hang out below 20 or below 19, it tells me that the market's really complacent. I mean, I feel it myself where, you know, there's a tendency for people to just kind of get lazy and, and the alertness, at least when it comes from a trading standpoint, when you, when you keep having these winning weeks over and over and over again, your guard tends to go down and there's a tendency for people to, to get a little bigger when they shouldn't be. And so I'm trying to stay cautious. And so my positions for this following week are pretty much uh, the same as last week. I have puts that I've sold at 395 and 390, and I do have some VIX calls at the $65 strike price. And I also have some Costco puts at the $450 strike price. And I still have the, the bank, uh, bank ETF at the $40 strike price. And that one, I'm a little bit more cautious about. That's probably my most dangerous position. But again, I have just a very small position. And if it goes against me, I will not get hurt too much. That's all I've got. And if you haven't yet, please click like and subscribe. That'll give you some notifications for when I release my, my episodes. I do that every single week. And so thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a great trading week. And I will see you next week.